All right. Okay, so welcome everyone to this new uh, session of IOF Talks Learning. Uh, today with our guest speaker, Lukumano Idrisu. Thank you for joining us. He will soon, uh, soon uh, uh, tell us all about, about uh, how to network, build an online presence and make and build uh, lasting relationships. But before that, we would like to introduce to those of you who don't know, um, the IOF, International Working Women of Finland. And first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Alina Valinen, and I will be <laughs> your host for tonight together with uh, Ashmita Badajaria, my co-host. Yes, um, so International Working Women of Finland. Uh, we, I think I skipped, no, I didn't, there it is. Um, is a community of internationally minded women uh, created in 2019. We have recent, recently celebrated um, two years of existence and over 6,000 members. Uh, and what we do is co-create a more integrated, diverse and inclusive Finnish society uh, by empowering, enriching and enabling opportunities for all. And um, the Eye of Talks Learning is exactly uh, doing that. Uh, it's, um, it's a series of webinars. Uh, on learning, how, higher education, university life, and employability of international talents. And our guests come from the world of academia, corporate education, learning, and other career backgrounds. Um, if you haven't already, please check out our other webinars in this year uh, from, from spring. Um, this autumn uh, or this end of year, we have uh, three more coming up that we will start promoting soon. Um, but before that, today's webinar is about online presence, networking, and building relationships, as I said, with Lokumano Idrisu. So that's it from me. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes. All right. Seems my uh, my room is quite bad, but I'll manage. I'm trying to use the slides. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, okay. Well, um, can I start presenting already? Yes, please. Well, I don't have the um, um, the access to present. You have to give me grant me access. Just a second. So you have to check the settings, the sharing settings. Yeah, I, I think you can make Lukumano the. Uh, That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Aha. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh, okay. Maybe now I can. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let me start sharing my screen first of all. Yes, we can see it. Mm. So um, good evening to everybody and I'm happy to um, talk to you on online presence, um, networking and building relationship. Um, I believe at the end of this um, event, we will kind of get the insight as to how we call um, approach or network with um, Finnish industry players to maximize our, our job seeking acquisition. Okay, so my name is Lukman Idris. I'm originally from Ghana and um, 
I am an aspiring strategy business developer, speaker and storyteller, and also a community builder. That's why I'm here to talk to you about, to, to help build my community and help or use whatever that I've learned that is through my experience to talk to you. And I have the passion to help students, especially international students, not only them and all immigrants, on how they can strategically network to increase their you know, job seeking possibilities. So um, this is my LinkedIn profile. You could, I mean, send me an invite anytime and I'll, I'm ready to, I mean, have you as part of my network. So um, today the content involves um, using LinkedIn as a leveraging LinkedIn to build um, a strong online presence, networking and building relationship, and then value validation projects, as well as maybe if we have students here, I will talk about um, internship tips and then we can have a work, we can conclude with a workshop. So straight, I want to put you on a test, okay? So um, you all, I mean, participants, you, we assume you are um, an employer, okay? And there is, um, there is this internship role that you've opened, okay? So, um, you saw Alina and Mariam's profile or CVs and you wanted to dig deeper. Their CVs caught your interest, right? And you wanted to dig deeper. So when you saw Alina's, you dug, you dug and you realized that Alina has no or uh, limited online presence. However, Mariam had a solid online presence and Mariam, I mean, profile is filled with um, content that reflects her values and passion for, you know, content marketing. She has also networked and built rapport. And when the application opened, like she reached out to her network in your company and has gotten a referral and more insight and intro. And even someone you trust has recommended Mariam to you. So in this two scenario, who will you hire? I would want to, I would like, I would love to see your answer. You write the name of the person and the reason, okay? So you write, if it is Alina, you write Alina, and then the reason you will hire Alina. If it's Mariam, you write Mariam and the reason. So I just need a minute, then you do that. I will see that in the comments and then we proceed. We'll just use one minute for this. Still waiting for answers. Um, Jordan, I'm um, sorry, Virginia says, Mariam, because Alina looks too anonymous to be hired. Um, Jordan Blake says, Mariam, because you know more about her than Alina. Could we have more answers from others so that we could proceed? Alina, Alina says, Mariam, because I don't know how much, I don't know more about um, Ali, um, Alina, okay. Maybe we could get two more answers, then I proceed. Okay. Um, Yunia says, I'll probably talk to both beco before deciding, but Mariam is more in immediately appealing because I know more about her. Okay. Um, then we have Gilia who says, Mariam, I would say, but depend on their CV. Okay. Then um, Crystal says, Mariam, because you know more about her. Okay. Thank you very much for your answers. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So now I think overwhelming majority have chose Mariam, right? So um, why am I sharing this, right? I'm sharing this because more, sorry, instead of, it's supposed to be Alina. So more of us are like um, Alina, okay, not Johanna. Because Oftentimes, if we are students, we either wait after graduation before we start building relationship with people in the companies of our interest or before we start building, you know, our brand. Okay. And two, the reason we often get more or less, sorry, the, the reason we get less responses is because we imagine that there is a vacancy open, okay? 500 people have applied. How do you stand out? So you will stand out when you already know the people and you have updated the skills to meet the requirements. And also when people can easily trust you to reference you, 
Why is it so? Because hiring itself is a risk, okay? It's a big risk. So when you avail yourself to the employer in advance, it makes the job easier for the employer to hire you and makes the job easier for you as a job seeker. That's why it is imperative to network, to build relationship, and then of course to build yourself in whatever way possible to get people get uh, to let people get to know you. So I, I have been saying this and I'll continue to say it. The deadliest mistake you can make in a job search or as a job seeker is starting the process only when a role is open. Why am I saying this? Let's reflect on um, the case of you know Alina and uh, and Mariam. If, if because Mariam have built kind of uh, a, a brand and of course have proactively networked with people in that company, it made the job easier for her. And you know in that competitive role, you know the manager or you people as managers have already kind of have, have the intention to even hire Mariam in advance. And that's why it is, this is very relevant. Again, one thing I've also realized about us as internationals, especially if we are students, we focus so much on our grade, okay, that we don't have time to network and build relationship. And I use this um, tweet from Fact, which says that a high GPA looks good on paper, but networking and building friendships, in this case, relationship, is what actually gets you job. And this is very, very, very crucial in Finland. Yes, sometimes um, an employer can employ without even asking you for your grade. Nah, they want to know you and know you have the soft skills and so on. Because the soft skills are the attitude they need in the job. So how can they know you? They will know you through networking. That is when you get, that's how you get close to them. And through the network, can you translate that to building a relationship and to creating value? So I always use my story to also inspire this. And I use my story, like how it took me six years to land a job in my dream company. Of course, um, I arrived in Finland in 2014 as a student. And in 2015 to 2020, I started applying to Vartila. Vartila because I they have that kind of international culture, I believe I could fit. So it was um, a company that I dreamt of working. And between 2015 to 2020, I kept applying without an interview, not even an interview, not even a single interview. Then what did I then do right this time? I, I started networking with um, relevant people in relevant departments in the organization and asked questions as to how to succeed in my application. So through that updated my skills, okay, I got to know the system they use and what, I mean, the, 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 the other, you know, kind of information or relevant information I needed. So I updated my skills to meet those requirements in that kind of places or department I intend to work. Then through that, um, I started getting insight as to how to reach out to hiring managers. Okay, and the relevant questions you need to ask beyond the job, beyond the job description, that may that may give them, um, that may in a, in a way kind of um, give them an insight of who you are or an impression of who you really are, and you know doing that, um, because of you know adequate networking. I I I I I I got to know some of the HR people. And then I started, you know, showing my CV to them and my video CV to them for them to review. So sometimes because if I write something, I can create a CV and send it to them and ask them if they could review. And then, of course, they'll make time to review for me and tell me, OK, well, if you do this or do that or do that, it may help you. And that's how the networking is. So if you build that rapport and you need that help, it will, it will help you and you succeed in it you know, uh, 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 in your application. And this time around, I got, I applied, I got the interview and then I, you know, I finally got hired as a project purchaser, you know? So the lessons here is that you don't have to give up when you have been rejected separately. You have to, you know, network with people and then also kind of um, ask questions and through the questions, you update your skills to meet the requirements in the, 
uh, I mean, in the relevant role we want to work. But although this takes time, hmm, in the end you succeed. Compare that to someone applying to 100 roles without getting an interview or keep getting rejections to you spending time um, three to seven months to adequately network with people in relevant positions and then applying for a few roles, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, 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 succeeding. So this is sometimes what we don't do and it's, 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 it translates to um, having a lot of um, negative, uh, ans negative answers or maybe rejections from companies. So moving on, um, there's this equation of luck and success I always capture. And um, um, this one, I captured it from Miriam's from La Dr. Miriam. So um, it says that um, she made the equation from the luck and success. And the equation of luck is preparation and opportunity and the success being preparation plus luck. So then she you know, created her own um, equation by saying preparation, that is two times preparation plus opportunity gives you success. And then I then kind of created a framework on my own, okay? To say that the two preparations you need here in Finland as a foreigner is first, the education is important and the skills. So this is one preparation. And second preparation is getting to, getting to learn about the Finnish people. It can be the language, the learning their culture, understanding their culture. This helps you to really understand them, to know how to approach them, which then helps to you know, build the relationship you may need, sorry, to network and then to build the relationship you may need. And if these two, uh, for instance, if these two preparations are made, it leads to the opportunities, would then lead to the success. And the opportunities in, includes the recommendations you may get to then get the job you need and the business deals you may get to then succeed. So, the, this is something that I, I this is something I captured or I, I, I formulated from this to, to share with you and I believe it may be of relevance. So, um, as I said, networking and building relationship is very, very, and building a personal brand is very important. And one, one, uh, one platform you could leverage and leverage well is LinkedIn. So I will use this opportunity to kind of tell you how you could maximize the use of LinkedIn to, I mean, network and stand out. And prior to that, I also like tell you how to hack your way through networking, even if it's not on LinkedIn. And as I said, you need to learn about friends, their language and the culture. If you are able to do that, it gives you an insight as to how to approach them. And then again, um, add, if you're a student or not a student, just add networking events to your academic schedules or any schedule of yours. And then you have to participate in, you know, volunteering activities, just like you are doing now. Uh, there are other uh, activities you could, like club activities, which includes things that you could, you know, uh, uh, participate. This is how you get to know people. You get to interact with people, talk to them, through that they get to know who you really are, understand you, and then, you know, um, and then it's, it, 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 I would say, kind of um, resolve some kind of biases they may even have, because knowing you in real is better than not knowing at all. Again, um, participate in challenging competitions, especially, you know, this uh, uh, large corporations, you know, organize the hackathons and, and so on. For instance, Varsla currently is, um, organizing what we call uh, the smart technology ecosystem challenge for university universities and universities of applied sciences you know uh, students all in Finland and you can participate and one of the award or the reward is that the winning team are guaranteed summer job positions from ABB Vartala Danfoss and so on so these are some of the ways you could even network and even get your goals realized and again, to um, you build a strong online presence, which is another way you could, you know, get yourself to stand out and then connect with relevant people on LinkedIn. So we will concentrate on the last two, the last two. So um, then what is personal brand? Uh, you know, normally 
when we say personal brand, when we say brand and we we always, what comes to mind is uh products from companies we know yes is because the, the products they have create value for us that's why immediately we we see the product we associate it with the company so the same is is the same applies to personal brand okay so the value you create for people and the the reason for the remembrance of you is the personal brand so let's go in this sense. So um, it says telling the world who you are, what you can do and what you're looking for or selling your unique self to the world. And I always say that in this world, if you don't stand for something, you stand for nothing. So it is always, all of us have personal brand, but how we you know, avail it or maybe unveil it to the world is another thing because we all have unique lives, but how we can use that unique life or unique stories of ours to impart or impact to the world is another thing. So um, why, why do you need personal branding? So let's look at um, the case of Mariam and Alina. You know, Mariam used personal brand to differentiate herself from the competition. And you know, and through that, it's paved way to build trust with prospective, you know, employer. Am I right? And it also boosts your reputation and motivates others to want to do business with you. It builds a community around your expertise or experiences. So um, why do you need to use LinkedIn? I, would, I, want, I always say that LinkedIn, especially if you are a job seeker and or a student, is one of the best ways or best platform sorry to build a personal brand why because there are nine billion content engagement a week on linkedin and surprisingly only three million people you know create content which is less zero to sorry less than one percent or one percent so this is an easier the easiest platform to stand out and gain strategic visibility because people come there to consume good and great content content and you as a student or a job seeker, the content you create, not, not just you creating the content or maybe your uh, uh, value you create through commenting or maybe reacting to, or maybe involving yourself into you know, a community on LinkedIn will, will help you stand out. So, so LinkedIn also gives you access to hidden jobs. And even remember that in Finland, 70 to 80% of jobs are, you know, are, never advertise and there is a source on recordscientist.com which says that and it also gives you access to help I, I would not just say this without actually proving it to you so proof number one is that this this here tells you that through my post on linkedin someone reached out to me said hi look man i came across your linkedin post and i like your energy and ideas it would be nice to connect okay so I connected with the person, okay? After connecting, then say, thank you for your prompt reply. I'm curious whether you have done, you have done any sales related work before or will be interested in B2B sales in the field of education. We are looking for two B2B sales representatives to join our team. What do you think? So like this one, a job is actually chasing me. Why? Because I have, you know, um, in a way um, built a certain brand that uh, 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 kind of, um, tells the world what I can do and people want to do business with me. Okay. So um, another one too is the access to help. Access to help in the sense that because the way I post on LinkedIn, someone reached out to me saying that, well, um, he has noticed my post and like in, a, in the nutshell, like um, anytime I'm coming to Helsinki, I could, you know, come to his studio so that we, you know, have a chat together and then he would want to uh, kind of give me a photo shoot. By then my, my picture was this one, it wasn't that nice. So he wanted to give me a picture to update my profile because when you create value, people want to create value in return. So that's, that's all about networking. It's all, it's all about giving. And when you give genuinely or with the intrinsic motivation, people also want to give back. Okay, then, as I said, LinkedIn gives you access to network and this networking also gets your referral. And remember that, you know, um, past experience resume, look at, look at uh, how do we call it? Look at this pie chart. That's your network 
kind of you know play a major role in getting you a job. The resume plays a role, past experience plays a role, the references plays a role, but you will get referenced through your network. So it's always very important to network. Very, very important, especially here in Finland where we live in a place which is, I would say, closed or maybe an enclosed area. So as I said, why does, so I, as I said, anytime I would always have, I'll prove with um, evidence that this works. So um, I wanted to, there was this company that I had interest in and uh, I had networked in advance with most of their employees. So there was a job that really opened and I wrote to the person and we just had a chat and I told him that I was interested in, a, in one of their position, which was open. This was somewhere around 2019. So he told me he knows the one who is recruiting and he will recommend, you to, recommend me to the person. And indeed he did. And the recruiter came to look at my profile and, and reached out to me. So like, why, how did I get this opportunity? I got the opportunity by networking in advance. And that is very, very relevant if you really want to, I mean, maximize your chance of getting, realizing your goal, especially when it comes to career. Again, as I said, through my post, someone reached out to me, he's um, a recruiter and asked me the kind of um, work that motivates me. And so the conversation, you know, moved from, moved from there to, 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 you know, kind of him recommending me to another recruiter who is in Barca to, you know, communicate and get me um, a relevant role, you know? So that's why you need to build a brand. When you build a brand, job chase you, you don't chase them. So, and again, last one is here. Um, due to what I do on Facebook and so, uh, sorry, on LinkedIn and so on. Then one, he, this person is like um, a chief operations manager or something, if I get it correct. But like, she holds a, a really relevant position in a company, okay? Wrote to me that, hi, Lukman, I love what you have been doing to inspire other students. And it's got me thinking that you are on a very similar wavelength as we are. We've currently, we are currently looking for two new tech talent sources, sources, sorry, to start in January. And I think this might be a really good opportunity for you to be able to continue to create impact. You understand? So why did this person write to me? The person wrote to me because she realized that whatever that I do, it's in line with what this kind of role, it's in line with this kind of role. So she believes I will get that. So of course there are chain of messages I wouldn't share, but and then uh, in conclusion, it tells you that she wanted me to um, come to their company or um, come for this role and even gave me the name of the recruiter to talk to him to give me that role. But of course um, I'm already involved in something else. So. I, you know, replied in a, in, a, in a very positive, like in a very respectful way, you know, to, to respectfully decline by thanking her. So as I, so in, 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 uh, in essence, it tells you that sometimes you have to chase what you want, right? But it is always good. It is always a good strategy to attract than to chase. When you attract, when you create a platform which makes you attract, it becomes easier for you than when you want to chase. Chasing is a long process because in this world, everybody is chasing. But when you, you know, make yourself in a way like a magnet that attracts, they rather come to you than you go into them. So, well, so this personal branding thing, is it difficult? How can we, what's the journey? How, how, how difficult it is? How challenging is this? Okay, so first of all, when, it, when you want to start building a personal brand, you always have to look at the passion in it because the passion is what drives you. And how do you, how do you um, uncover your, your passion? It's through your, your, your strength and skills. And, and even, even if you can't, if you don't know your strength and skills, ask your friends and family, what do you think I do best? Sit and analyze yourself. What do you think I can do best so I can, how I can do best? So you look at, you, you, you analyze yourself very well and then, you know, choose what you can really do and then start focusing on them, learning more about that to master. And then through that, you carve the niche. And of course, 
you you find a relevant uh, online or maybe a, a platform where you will want to execute that so you know um we're talking about that and in this case we are using linkedin and when you on, the, on that platform, you create content, not just content, but insightful and value added, and it should be consistent and has cohesion. So there is this LinkedIn framework, which was cap captured um, by uh, Francisca Panta. And uh, this was given by Dr. Oh, I'll cry for the name. <laughs> um, the one famous LinkedIn icon. OK, uh, Dr. Natalia, yes. OK, so she was saying that um, uh, you have to position yourself and position yourself to include having a very good profile picture, you know, a background headline, contact details, and so on. And then you become like a content creator. You write down things and publish and so on. And through that, I mean, convert those who, you know, react to your content to not just a network, but you build a relationship with them. So, it is essential to you know kind of optimize your LinkedIn profile, and this includes having a good prof um, professional or good or professional profile. You add a relevant cover photo which depicts your brand or what you what you really do, and then you customize your headline to draw proposition. Okay, so imagine this one. Um, Jonathan Javier says that um, he's a CEO and founder of consultant, and he his um, ex uh, strategic operations. As Cisco Global Network. But like look at the value proposition. She he's turning underdogs into winners. Okay, so that is his value proposition. Similarly, look at this one. Dr. Natalia says she's LinkedIn, she's a LinkedIn icon, uh, personal branding pro, entertainer. So if you really want to grow your um LinkedIn on uh, which is ad free, she will talk. So this is what she does. So and then uh Aston says that uh, he helps people land amazing jobs that are applying online. So if you need help with your job search, let's talk. Okay, imagine you being an, a, a student or unemployed, what do you do? Instead of just writing a student, you, should, you could write something that you want to do. So if it is marketing research, you write, you write something like a marketing researcher. That's, of course, then you add, like you write other kind of, statement that draws value because um LinkedIn we have headhunters or recruiters and they search based on terms. So if you have this like uh if you have the job title as part of your um your headline your name appears when you are when the the, the keyword is searched. So um again you also need to kind of, kind of customize your LinkedIn URL so that it doesn't become random. And also let you just know that you're open for work. So a, an example of customizing your LinkedIn URL is this one. So you do a LinkedIn.com slash your name, but not this one, one, two, three, no, 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 not this random one. And do it with your name. It's, it's, it speaks a lot. And again, you can let um, people know you are open for work. So, but make sure it's only for recruiters. It helps. There's a reason for that because when you are reaching out to people, when you have the open to uh, open to work, sometimes people may want to judge you and wouldn't give you the necessary attention. But when you have it only for recruiters, it, it makes it easier. Of course, those who are recruiters, when they search, they will see you. So I wouldn't um, spend time to talk more on that. So if you need um, a complete profile optimization, you can reach out. You can reach out to these links. Um, Yulia has this one, which is very good. She has like a full manual for you. And then Austin also has like profile, LinkedIn profile tips, which is beneficial. So now um, on LinkedIn too, you also need to kind of uh, consider some don'ts, okay? Um, it's, it's, it's easier when you, do, when you, it is not good when you use like, you just send people connection requests without letting them know the reason for connection and do not send spam messages. Also, um, you don't need to lock down your profile because it prevents people to really get to know you or search to know you. 
Imagine if a recruiter wants to know you better. If you have your profile logged in, it's not your, con your connect, he you cannot see you and it doesn't help. And of course, be, of course, you have the freedom to speak, but be very mindful of how you criticize and comment negatively on LinkedIn. And I, again, to it is not appropriate to be asking new connections or people who do not know you to endorse you. It doesn't really speak well. So now, how do you network? Networking, as I said, is easy, but not easy. You only need to know the tricks. And how is the tricks? The trick is having commonality. So you can, you can network from people who have attended your school or who are your mates or who are in the same industry as you and so on. And the commonality can also come from the name or from the same country or from the same continent or anything that can draw the person's you know, attention. So imagine if you're a student or you are, if you're a student, you can easily connect with an alumni. And how do you do that? You just connect with the alumni via the school's LinkedIn page. And if you go there, you see uh, the alumni and perhaps what they have studied. So you can either, either connect with, you can either use uh, two ways. You can have two commonalities coming from the same school and, um, you know, um, pursuing the same program, okay? And these are two. One is enough, but two is also good. So then you personalize invites. You don't just um, connect randomly. Then you, you, you know, um, kind of um, create or draft a message by saying, hi, I am, you know, Alina, an international student at, you know, Tampere University studying the other program. I saw you are an alumnus and also studied the same program. It would be great to connect with you. This is simple. These two tests will easily make the person who want to connect, right? If you don't have anything to say. And then through connecting, you create a convo, okay? And that conversation should be thought provoking. I will, I will give you an example of that. So you can ask about their challenges and try creating value for them. This I will talk more about that when it comes to value validation. So this is an example of how I I um I I I reached out to someone and his um his um, his response. So I told him I introduced myself by saying I'm Lukman Idrisu, an international student at Vasa University of Life Sciences. And I study strategic business development, and I'll be happy to connect with him. And he re responded by saying that, well, let's connect. And I, I myself is, you know, an old student of the university, you see. And from there, conversation can begin from there. So if you get this reply, you have to strategically create a convo. And that conversation will then go on and go on. If you are smart, you could look at the loopholes in the conversation to create solution. And then it will help in building relationship and through building relationship, it may help you get your, your, your goal realized. That's how it is. Okay, so the next one, you can also be connecting with guest speakers. Remember that when you, especially if you're a student or not a student, you keep on going to the event today, invite guest speakers. And some of these guest speakers often occupy relevant roles. You never know when you connect with them, it's good, especially in advance. Especially me as a, when I used to be a sorry, as a student, normally when I know a guest speaker is coming, I connect in advance. So what I do is um, I say, I just introduce myself and I say that, oh, we have you as a guest lecturer in this place or in that place. And uh, I can't wait to hear your lecture. Then I, I connect to the person. So even if the person, you know, connect with me, I, I, I wait till the end of the lecture or the guest speaking, sorry, of the, of the speech. Then, of course, I highlight some of the things that resonated with me and reply. So this time, it creates conversation and it's, it's one thing leads to another, one thing leads to another, and the relationship is built. Okay, so this is just an example of how I have created you know, I've reached out to one of our guest speakers and the results. Okay, now you can also kind of connect with industry players and this demands a bit of work. So you research about them before connecting, okay? So you can personalize uh, the message by introducing yourself and what you do and either kind of look at whether they have a, a, an article 
there's an article about them or there's something they have said somewhere which have been captured or anything that will kind of, you know, provoke their thoughts when you when you kind of um, reach out to them. So you, this is just a template. Like you, after introducing yourself, you say, I read your recent article on the title and the re then you can proceed to say what's resonated with you. You understand? Then you connect with a person. So let me give an example. I write, once reached out to someone who occupies a, a, a big portfolio. And I, after introducing myself, I, I, of course I researched about her first. So I congratulated her for being, you know, for winning something and pleasure to connect with her. And she connected with me. And, you know, she's a president for, you know, occupying, she, she occupies a role as a president in a, an organization. So these are some of the ways you could, you know, connect with people. And again, um, this is another example of how I reached out to someone and this was her response. And after this response, conversation, you know, kept going and kept going. And now she's even my mentor. That's how the world goes. So networking demands time. You need to commit time for that. And when you commit your time, it also helps in getting good results. So um, sometimes, I also share this with um, people, especially using Austin's approach and LinkedIn as a leverage. You, as a leverage, you could do the following. You make a list of 100 people in target roles in 10 to 15 companies that interests you. Okay, as a job seeker, if you do this, it helps better than applying randomly to every, and every company. Because if you don't take time to research about the company and the company culture, it becomes very difficult. It becomes very difficult. You keep applying and you don't get results. Uh -huh. So what you do is you research about them, their goals, their challenges, look for commonalities and other alignments. As I earlier indicated, do you have a name, school, field of study, et cetera, in common? You personalize, personalize and invite and um, state why you will connect with them, just like I have shown. Then they engage their content, uh, try to engage their content, especially when they write on LinkedIn. So read, like, and leave insightful comments and create a conversation. And one thing is creating a conversation is not about chit chat and hey, how are you? No, go straight to the point and ask relevant questions that will, you know, create a uh, solid, meaningful conversation. And again, to one way to, you know, stand out is, you know, um, content creation. And when you update your LinkedIn with um, LinkedIn status with authentic, insightful, and value-adding comments or content, sorry, about your passion and field of you know, specialty, it can help you boost your profile and you easily get noticed. And as I said, all of us have stories. How you present your story is how it will, depending on how you, you know, share your story will attract people and well, people will want to listen to you. People, it will resonate for people and they want to listen to you and they will even want to help you when, when necessary. And again, to aside that, you can also sell your little experience with length in a professional way. And it's, it will also kind of get you some results, some extent. And one thing is you don't have to be an expert. Everybody starts from being a novice. So, and don't worry about likes and so on. Just what is needed is the discipline. That is the desire to learn, to improve, and to grow. That's all. And you can take inspirations from the other things. So true that you know you carve out your content, your unique stories, and then you reflect on things uh, you've learned from experts or influencers. So anywhere, and when you do that in the time, then sometimes it can also get some I mean, uh, reactions from their network. Then you share the key takeaways from relevant events, just like today, that we could share content, I mean, key takeaways. This might also kind of create um, value for others who are in your network. And you never know, it will keep, uh, you know, you get the reactions you may need. And I mean, your profile will keep, you know, getting strategic visibility. So, as I said, um, one of the content I created, um, especially when I got my, um, this thing on when I when I was hired at Vartina, of course, I just created a content just sharing a bit of my story and look at what's it, you know, look at the reactions, okay? And 
look at their views. Over 4,000 people viewed my profile. And then over, and my content or the, the content had over 164,000 views. And look at the company search. So when you create content, as I said, it gives you the strategic visibility. The second one is this one. Um, mm. Sharing my story and adding content and look at, look at the results. And there are more of these which keep getting like uh, uh, the views and so on and people reach out to me. Uh -huh, so, and also to you just kind of create content without engaging in others, you need to engage with the content of others who are in your network, read, like, and leave insightful comments on others' posts. It can either be those who are your ass, who are your first connections, or even if you see a post coming from someone who is not in your network, but it is worth commenting. Comment insightfully, it, it's your persistence to get to network with the person and those of his network. And that's what, how you build the network. And make an effort to reply to people who comment on your posts in a timely manner. And this is an example of someone who commented on my posts. Imagine he commented on my posts, he resonated my posts, commented on it, and later look, his comment alone got 91 likes. So just imagine, this is just an example of the insightful comments that I'm talking about. When you, you can even comment and the comments may even get more reactions than the main posts. So having the time to comment and comment insightfully is very, very relevant. And one thing too you can do on LinkedIn is retargeting. That's something a lot don't do, but I do a lot and it helps me to connect with genuine people. So I may not have a lot of contact, but those little contacts that I have are quality, I will say, I'll call them like quality contact or quality network. So that is converting second and third connections who react to your post to become your first connections. So people you don't know or people who are not your non-connection who view your profile or comes to comment or like your post, thank them for liking or viewing your profile and then uh, use that to connect with them because this tells you that they resonate with your post. So your coming post, they may want to, they may want to, there's a likelihood of reacting to that. And that's how the relationship build. So this is just an example of how I do it. So like someone comes to like my, my, my post, okay, who, are, who is not my connection. I, I, I thank the person by saying that, by introducing myself a little, then I connect with the person, then the person comes and reply, you know, and also this is how, like, also when someone views my profile, that's what I do. Tell you, thanks for viewing my profile. Then I introduce myself a bit and, you know, I connect. So that's how the relationship, happens. so it becomes like a close, like a touchy one than the, the random one we've been having. So um, building an online presence is hard work, but if you do it well, it's worth the while. So um, this uh, quote from Austin Helen says that as you invest in yourself and your personal brand, it becomes a catalyst, you know, that continues to open doors to new opportunities for you and in the future. And you could see some of the examples that I gave, which through kind of building my personal brand, me chasing jobs has turned to jobs chasing me and you can equally do that. So now um, another way you call, uh, network better, build relationship better, or even get job easily is validating, is true value validation project. So what is it? Value validation project is creating a unique and valuable de deliverable for an individual or an entity to establish your capability as well as build strong relationship. So in this case, if you're a student and you are given a group work, right? Look at the company of interest and tailor that group work or project to the company of your interest. And you can do an extensive research. Maybe you are a job seeker. You don't have to rely only on CV and cover letter. Why not do an extensive research on a company or an, on an, or an individual or company and then, you know, uh, create solutions, you understand? Because if you keep waiting for CV, if you keep waiting, banking on CV and cover letter, you may apply and apply and you get tons of rejections. 
So sometimes you just need the opportunity to prove to someone that you have the capability and that's all of us don't get it because you can't use CV and cover letter to prove that. So you can use this, you can leverage on validating your value through a project. So extensive research from a, for an individual or a company and creating solutions. And I can give an example. So um, there was this um, at a, um, talent cafe event I attended, right? And there was a guest speaker. So when the, the guest speaker came, and spoke, of course, I reached out later after LinkedIn and you know, I wrote to her, she replied and I, I even said in my, um, in the, in the lesson that it would, be, uh, it would be it would be good to meet her or to talk to her, you know, and of course she created the time for us to meet. And after meeting, you know, I realized, I listened to her carefully. I didn't make the conversation about myself. I just had like a nice chat, getting to know her more. And through knowing her, I realized she had the intention to go into politics. Like for instance, to buy for municipal uh, councilorship, that is the, to participate in the municipal elections. So of course she was trying to know more of the reasons why internationals do not vote or have the lack of interest in voting, okay? Of course, I gave her my insight, my personal insights as to the reason. So I, we left, okay? And when we left, I came home. What I did was trying to create value for her. How did I do that? I started, I created a survey, okay? And I sent it to all the University of Applied Sciences in uh, all the universities and University of Applied Sciences in, here in Vasa, okay? And I, I also printed some out and I went to, I mean, the, the, the market square or the city center and also when I meet the immigrant, I try to, you know, administer the, 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 the survey. So after that, I gathered, you know, the, the data and I analyzed that and I made a comprehensive report on the survey and I sent it to her and I gave her suggestions, okay? So when she saw it, she was very happy and she said, she like, she saw the interest in tanking. Okay, after that, I did that intrinsically, like just to help her. So when I did that, it created a solid bond for us. So after that, months later, okay, there was a job opening in Bartla. And I, I, I called there and I, sorry, well, I, I, I was about to apply the job and I, I saw the name of the hiring manager. So she also works at Bartla, for example. So I called there and I said, oh, well, I saw this job and I realized this person is the hiring manager. Do you know her? I said, oh yeah, I know, I know her, I've worked on her project for her. And I said, oh, well, there is, um, there is this job I'm applying and she, she's, um, she's the hiring manager. And she said, oh, wow, that's fine. Then I can talk to her, okay? So she spoke to her. She had a, a, a nice 30 minutes and she talked, like, she just talked about me, who I really am. And trust me, that was the first time I got a Barcelona in interview. I'm just giving an example. It wasn't that I was, I didn't qualify. I qualified actually. I had all the skills, but when someone refer you, trusted person refer you, you have 40% chance of making it to the interview. You see, so this is an example of creating value for people, learn to listen to people, try to create solutions for them. It can be just something small, but that something small could be in their heart forever. And whenever you are in need, they would want to help you no matter what. So, um, for instance, um, another example is if you you are you are you are like seeking a job in marketing. You are seeking a job in marketing. What do you do? You can conduct a competitive analysis for your company of interest and present it to them. If you seek job in data analytics, you survey and create solution. You survey the company's data of your interest, and then you create solution from that data. Similarly, when it comes to job in sales, look at that and pitch a deck that presents a sales idea. This helps to to um, tell the company that you have the capability. And even if they don't give you a job now, trust me, you'll be on, their, you'll be on top of their mind. And if not today, tomorrow, they will call you for an opportunity. So um, to recap, if, um, especially if you're a student or an immigrant and, and you're here, let's take like, if you are schooling, you need to, 
know that your career journey starts immediately when you start schooling. So you don't have to waste time. As I said, look at the company first. Scout through your the the area you live, the region you live, the companies that are there. Scout through their company culture. Know if you can fit. Then start networking immediately. And as I said, network and build relationship beforehand. Some, similarly, if you can build that's where you can build a profile, do that, present your story, present your talent or your purpose on social media. It can either be wherever you want it, but make sure where you are is where your target audience are. It's very relevant. And again, to think out of the box approach is what I said, what I presented as the valued validation, which is um, researching, creating value validated projects and participating in competitions and um, and, and challenges. So um, if some of you, if you are here and you are already in an internship, the tips I can give you is that uh, you focus not only developing hard skills, but soft skills, be curious and ask questions, ask your supervisor of his expectation and how you can fulfill them. Then also ask them if the tasks add value to the business and interact beyond your teammates. Also, you find mentors. So this is just something little for people who are already here and are intent. So um, the workshop here is that um, you can make a reflection post on LinkedIn, and then you can talk about how, like, you had a pleasure to listen to me and how, uh, for instance, uh, you were resonated and your key takeaways, and you can tag me. So through interacting with your post, some of my network can see them. And some of them are employers and um, other relevant key people. You can use that the format, the retargeting format I, I told you about to, to uh, reach out to them. And then it can help start them to build your network. So I'll end the uh, presentation here and look for your questions. I'll wait your questions then. Thank you very much for listening. Yeah, thank you. This was a very, very comprehensive presentation. Let's see if we get if we get any questions. Um, not yet. Yeah, I think you've covered quite a lot. Um, yeah. Maybe somebody can, yeah, can. <laughs> ah, there, there we go. Yeah, Yulia has a question. Okay. So, any advice for developing a personal brand on LinkedIn if you have multiple professional interests? Oh, yes, there is um, multiple professional interests. What do you mean? What did, could you just um, could you just kind of give an example of a multiple professional interest? Um, Yulia. Ah, okay. I have experience as a healthcare professional, but I can also do copy editing. It is perfectly fine. It is perfectly fine. You can be talking about both of them and even using talking about the healthcare, making content about healthcare also proves your capability as someone doing copy editing or someone doing, you know, um, or how do we call it copywriting or, or something like that. So you can you can do it, it doesn't matter. Or you can even do um article, uh, you can be creating content on both, it doesn't matter. Um, any more questions? Yes, Virginia, please go ahead. If 
writing takes longer. You can just um, yeah. unmute and, 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 and ask. Yeah. Yeah, so she uh, says. Yeah. We can read it. <laughs> yeah, any, any recommendation for those who feel kind of old and not really updated in LinkedIn's, LinkedIn posts and so? Okay. Um, one thing, you have to believe in yourself. Self-belief is important in this life. If you don't have self-belief, you can't even apply for a job. You will think that everybody is better than you. Have self-belief. There's nothing like someone is old. LinkedIn is just a platform for everybody, not for the young and so on. So just it's, it's a simple tool you can use. What you need to do is just put your details at the right places and you are good to go. And you can connect with, as I said, you can connect using some of the tips I have given you. If you don't have anything to write about from, like from your personal experience or your personal or professional story, you can just also be scoring through like the posts of people you, you know, on your network. And then you kind of comment, as I said, you can even use commenting strategy to create more value for people. Because when you comment on people's posts, they, they feel happy and they, it, it creates a chain of conversations. So it's a way of, you know, creating value for them. So if your comment, you know, kind of, um, drive or I would say prompt people to think it's a way of creating value so don't, don't just worry don't feel you are old don't feel don't have this kind of you know uh, low self-esteem just be who you are share your authentic story people will resonate with you and then it's it's it will like graduate from that Thank you, Virginia, for your question. Yeah, any more? Yeah, as Lukumaru said, you can even unmute and you can ask directly. We well, can fine. unmute and ask directly so that we can. Yeah. Too much easier. Oh. Yeah, that'd be better, actually. Hmm, don't think so. No, no more questions? Yeah, everybody's ready to go and try your uh, yes <laughs> your <Okay>. strategies. <laughs> so yeah, yes. yeah, please please get in, get in touch with uh, with Lukumanu, with us, with uh, the people you're interested in, and let us know how it <laughs> how it went. Yeah, and uh, thank you once again, Lukumanu. It was an amazing presentation. Yeah, you're welcome. So I'll also post my LinkedIn profile here yeah. in the comments chat. Yes. You can send me a direct uh, request and I'll accept that, don't worry. And if you make a post, you can tag me, you can tag my name and I'll, I will respond to them appropriately. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you very much to the audience. Thanks for the feedback. Thanks for the, for the comments. I really appreciate them. So yes. Um, you can also, as I said, um, make your comments known or maybe your takeaway you know, on LinkedIn as well. So that can be a starting point to start creating content. It will give you the, the confidence if you've not st started creating content. It gives you the confidence to start you know, writing on LinkedIn and so on and so forth. So this, this can be just the genesis. So I, I hope to get a lot of you know, um, these comments from you. Thank you, Julia. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Virginia. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. Thank you, Supret. Thank you, everyone who has got Isabella, Jordan Blake. Thank you, Alina, everyone. Um, Mahdi, thank you. I'm looking at, I want to mention everybody. Krista, Crystal, and everyone. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Yes, and we thank you, Lukumanu, and uh, you. I guess I guess that's it. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening yeah, thank you. or yeah, wherever you are. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you so much.